VLANs are amazing. They allow you to logically group devices under a subnet, and they add a lot of benefits like improved security, performance, and imagine this. A small to medium-sized school with different departments like accounting, faculty, students, and HR. Now, we definitely don't want all of these folks sharing the same network, you know, potentially wrecking AVOC by accessing each other's sensitive information. Who wants students messing with faculty grades or teachers checking accounting salaries? That's where VLANs come to help. Now, sure, we could go the traditional route with subnetting and physical separation, but that just means more infrastructure, more routers. And let's be real, for a small to medium-sized company, or even your home network, that's a bit of an overkill. That's where VLANs really shine. Just like subnets, VLANs split up the network. But here's the cool part, they operate at the link layer or layer two, as opposed to the network layer or layer three of the Aussie model. That means that they work their magic at the MAC address level, not the IP level. So instead of involving extra routers, all the heavy lifting can be done at the switching level and all devices in the network can be logically grouped and isolated in their corresponding VLAN. By the way, if you want to know more about the Aussie 7 layer and other topics, make sure to subscribe because I'm going to be making videos about that topic and many other topics soon, okay? Don't forget. And now this is where you might ask, but if there is no router, how does this all work? How does the data know where to go? There's no IP addresses. When a device wants to transmit data across the network, the data must be wrapped into two distinct containers. The first one is the IP packet. Think of it like a little envelope containing the message, the source, and the destination IP addresses. That envelope, also known as a packet, goes inside another container, and that container is called the Ethernet frame. Think of it like a tube canister divided into several slots. The IP container will then go into its designated slot inside the frame container. Since VLANs work at layer two, the envelope or the IP part can never be accessed by the switch. Instead, when the frame reaches the switch, the switch will add a VLAN tag ID in a specifically designated area within that frame. When the frame reaches its destination switch, in this case there's only one switch, the switch reads the VLAN tag and uses the information to forward the frame to the appropriate VLAN. Now this common method of tagging is known as 8021Q or 8021Q, however you want to say it, where the VLAN tag is inserted into the Ethernet frame and the frame is then transmitted with the tag intact. Tag IDs range from one to 4,095. So you can have a total of 4,096 VLANs, but certain VLANs are reserved for specific purposes. For example, VLAN ID 1 is often reserved for the default VLAN. I know that this is probably a little bit confusing, okay? I, I, I won't blame you, it's a lot of information, but a simple way that I like to think about how VLANs work is picturing a vast roadway with multiple lanes designed for different types of vehicles, such as standard lanes for regular cars and dedicated lanes for carpooling and buses. Each vehicle can move freely in their dedicated lane, but not go outside of it, or you are going to get a fine. And I shamefully experienced it. Now, let's imagine a giant switch at the beginning of the road, where each lane originates from the designated switch port. You can imagine that each lane is in fact an Ethernet cable being part of a VLAN. In this example, the first lane would belong to the bus VLAN, followed by the second and third lanes dedicated to the carpool VLAN, and the remaining lanes reserved for regular cars, so a regular car VLAN. Each car on these lanes symbolizes an Ethernet frame carrying data and unable to access the next lane unless it's part of that group, or in this case, part of that VLAN. And this is exactly how we would configure a switch. Each port of the managed switch is configured with the VLAN the device is connected to or the device is part of. We can also connect multiple switches together in order to expand the network and its reach. And this is always done without having to resort to layer three and you know, for things like IPs and router. For example, if we want the traffic for VLANs 30 and 40 to go from switch A to switch B, we could achieve this via a trunk 
cable. Trunking is the ability to carry traffic for multiple VLANs across different switches. Now you're probably thinking, would this stuff also work with Wi-Fi? Absolutely. Trunking is also used when you want to add, uh, you know, Wi-Fi devices to particular VLANs. And for that, we would need an access point with VLAN support. We would need to connect the Wi-Fi access point to the switch and configure the switch port to be a trunk port, which means allowing multiple VLAN traffic to flow through it. In this case, for example, VLANs 30 and 40. Now that we have the traffic flowing from switch to the access point, all you need to do is configure the access point with the VLAN IDs and assigning them by creating one SSID per VLAN. Now, all of this stuff that we've done without the need of IPs and routers is just for VLAN configuration and logical device grouping. But you will still obviously need IPs so that you can communicate at the network layer. On my next video, I will show you how you can do all of this in PFSense. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. And by the way, I'm really sorry for my cheesy animations because After Effects is really not my forte. There are also a lot of benefits for using VLANs in your home network. One of the biggest ones is enhanced security. With VLANs, you gain precise control over access privileges. For instance, segregating your IoT devices into a dedicated VLAN allows you to regulate their access through firewall rules, ensuring that they remain isolated from critical networks where you might have your mobile phone or personal computer, office computer, whatever. You know, sensitive stuff. Now, efficient multicast traffic management. Wow, it's, it's, uh, you almost roll your tongue when you're saying that, right? VLANs play a crucial role in isolating multicast traffic, preventing the unnecessary floating of multicast packets throughout the entire network. This is particularly advantageous in scenarios involving multicast applications such as video conferencing or streaming. And another really big one is centralized control for child devices. You can create a dedicated VLAN for your children's devices to centralized content control and monitoring. Another really big one is the quality of service or QAS. VLANs can be used to implement quality of service, uh, like certain policies prioritizing certain types of traffic within specific VLANs. In essence, integrating VLANs into your home network not only fortifies security measures, but also streamlines network traffic, it optimizes performance, and allows for personalized control over different device categories. This comprehensive approach ensures a more robust, an efficient home network infrastructure. Now, this was a really fun video to make, so I really hope that you enjoyed it. My name is Philippe, and I will see you on the next one. Take care. Oh, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.